Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about coronal atresia. So coronal atresia basically refers to a developmental failure of the nasal cavity to communicate with the nasopharynx. So basically when we say coronal atresia, what does that mean? So coronal refers to an opening at the back of the nasal passage that empties into the nasopharynx. And atresia basically refers to abnormal narrowing or absence of an opening. So what happens in coronal atresia is there is an abnormal narrowing of the opening. So there is a narrowing of what of the corona that's usually present at the back of the next nasal passage. So with the, when we look at the definition, coronal atresia refers to a congenital disorder where the back of the nasal passage, the corona is blocked, usually by abnormal bony or soft tissue which may be membranous due to failed recanalization of the nasal fossa during fetal development. So epidemiology. One thing you need to know is unilateral coronal atresia is twice as common as bilateral coronal atresia. Then it's frequently associated with other anomalies and it's part of the charge syndrome. So it comprises of the charge syndrome. So we've got a coloboma, heart defects, atresia coronae, which is coronal atresia, retardation of growth, genital abnormalities, and the abnormalities, and coloboma of the iris. So this is a diagram showing a coloboma and ear abnormalities here. So basically, charge syndrome comprises of coloboma, heart defects, atresia coronae, retardation of growth or development, genital or urinary abnormalities, ear abnormalities, and deafness, or deafness. So what are the etiological factors? So coronal atresia usually arises due to a periconceptual maternal exposure to one thyroid medication such as methimazole, carbimazole, cigarette smoking, caffeine greater than three cups per day, elevated levels of vitamin B12, zinc, and vitamin B3, which is niacin, Pathophysiology, it has been hypothesized that the condition is due to 1. Failed resorption of the oral nasal membrane during embryonic period that leads to outgrowth of the palatine bone. And then it leads to atypical mesodermal adhesions that lead to altered local growth factors. So by clinical features of bilateral coronal atresia, early presentations include infants are only able to breathe through the mouth immediately postpartum. Then this cyanosis that worsens when feeding and improves when crying. Upper airway obstructions such as noisy breathing, dyspnea. Food intake is impossible because of complete airway obstruction is a life threatening condition immediately following birth because of the worsening dyspnea associated with feeding. Then unilateral coronal atresia. It usually presents later in life. That is because there's only one blockage on one side, so the other side usually helps with the breathing. Chronic rhinitis is in the affected nasal passage with virulent nasal discharge over several weeks. Diagnostics. So the inability to pass the catheter through the nasal cavity is an indication of coronal atresia. Confirmatory tests include contrast, contrast rhinography in the supine position or a CT scan. Unilateral or bilateral narrowing of the posterior nasal passage and airway width of less than 3 mm. Treatment of bilateral coronal atresia includes urgent insertion of an oropharyngeal airway or even intubation as a temporary airway until surgery, surgical perforation, and local use of chemotherapeutic drugs such as mitomycin C. It may reduce the need for stenting, dilatation, and a second surgery. Unilateral coronal atresia, usually what to do is observation and subsequent surgery when the infant is one to two years old. In suspected cases of bilateral coronal atresia, do not feed. A feeding tube is required due to the increased risk of aspiration. So in summary, coronal atresia refers to a congenital condition characterized by a bony and a membranous obstruction of the posterior nasal passage. This obstruction may occur either unilaterally or bilaterally. Unilateral coronal atresia often presents late with chronic inflammation, such as rhinorrhea, congestion of the affected nasal passage. Bilateral coronal atresia manifests as obstructed nasal breathing with intermittent cyanosis immediately after birth. Breathing improves when crying as it allows the infant to breathe through his or her mouth. 
The diagnosis is confirmed with contrast rhinography or CT imaging. The definitive treatment is by surgery in which the obstructive membrane or bony portion is perforated. Thank you for watching.